This video will cover the topic, graphing the inverse of a function given its graph. In order to graph the inverse of a function, provided the graph of the function, it is important to find several points of the function. By the definition of an inverse function, the domain of the function is the range of its inverse, and the range of the function is the domain of the inverse. By using this fact, as well as several points of the function on the graph, we can plot the inverse function. Let's work on an example together. Below is the entire graph of function f. Graph the inverse of f. I'm not really sure where to start. Since we don't know the function itself, how do we know what the inverse is so that we can plot it? We actually don't need to know the function in order to plot the inverse. Let's first find some points and create a table. One column will have points for the original function, and the other column will have points of the inverse based on the point for the original function. For example, one point of f is x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 8. So we will add this point to our table. Another point is when x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 1. And we will find a third one, which is when x is equal to 5 and y is equal to negative 5. Because the pattern changes a little bit after this point, let's find one more point. Another one is when x is equal to negative 3, and y is equal to negative 6. By using these points, we can find points for our inverse as well. For example, by using the point 7, 8 in the original function, we know that the inverse of f has a point at 8, 7. Additionally, for the point 6, 1, for the function f, we have 1, 6 as a point for our inverse. By swapping the x and y values of each of these points in our original function, we get points for our inverse. Okay, this makes sense now. So now can we plot these points on the coordinate plane? Yes, we can. By doing so, we get a graph that looks like this. So it seems like in order to graph the inverse of a function, given its graph, we first need to look at some points of the original function, and then use those points along with the definition of inverse to find some points of the inverse function. After doing this, we can plot the inverse on the coordinate plane. Am I missing anything? No, you're not. It seems like you understand this much better now. Good job.